Okay, time to put the coil in. The first thing I did is I twisted the ends. Um, that appears to massively reduce the resistance so that there won't be as much heat in the wire when it comes outside the oven. And that goes into the holes that I drilled before. Then place the coil safe and snug in its track. Actually, it's fitting really nicely now. And the same on this side. Oh dear. I guess I made that coil a bit tight. Okay, well, I think I've got enough to make another one. I hope. Oh dear, that was kind of irritating, but anyway, I managed to get it in. There. Okay. Oh, now that is a relief to see. Right, so now it's time to close this bad boy up. And I'm now going to... I want to get the door on now, but, and I did anticipate this, I knew this was going to happen, um, but I couldn't guess at what the dimensions were before I started. So because of the steel here and the fact that there are angle irons here, the door doesn't sit flush here and I need to, to change that. So what I'm planning to do is I'm going to cut into the bricks here and by about one centimeter which means I also have to cut the steel that I have on this side so let me show you I'm gonna grind off about the same amount here so that should now if I then cut the bricks that should all fit quite neatly and shut properly so that's the plan Right, I've cut the edge here, the edge is here on the angle grinder. A little bit tricky because I can't get this out again, so I had to do it with this in. But anyway, let's hope that it worked. And I'm now going to do the very messy business of sawing these to shape. So on with the respirator, because I ain't touching the stuff without.
That I'm pretty happy with actually. In order to rectify the, the warp in the base, which I described earlier, I've decided to do two things. One, to rectify the warp that way, I'm putting um, these braces, these very these small angle irons across the top, which I'm going to weld to the uprights. Um, there is a gap here. I really don't care about that, um, as long as they don't impede on the door. And that, in addition to a piece that I'm going to put along the bottom, will hold the braces for the control box. So that's the plan at the moment. Um, there is also a feasibility that I will put the control box on top, um, which might be an even better idea because I've actually got space this way and it saves a lot of sideways space. So that's going through my head as well. And then the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put... <clears throat> actually, that's even a better idea because then I can put the braces across this way, which will solve the warp that's happened that way. Um, so that's what I'm going to do now. I'm going to start welding um, these pieces up. In the spirit of not trying to over-engineer things and trying to build braces on the side and to save space, I thought I would put the control panel on the top like that. And then I realized, of course, there is an issue with that because however well the door fits, I'm sure that heat will escape this way. It's bound to. There's going to be some heat. And if I'm wanting to change something on the, um, on the PID, I'm probably going to be hindered because the oven will take a long time to cool down. There'll be a huge amount of heat coming this way and it will be much safer to put it on the side. Now I understand why Blackbeard uh, Project, for example, built this on a stand with the, the PID underneath. And now I understand the logic of that. And you know, with 2020 hindsight, that's probably what I would have done. Um, but so I'm left with, with actually putting it on the side. And that is so ugly. 
I've got to say, I'm, I'm fairly pleased with, with what's happened. I mean, the welds are really ugly, but that's a nice fitting door. And lo and behold, the hinges work. So, one of the last main structural things I've got to do is a, a way of shutting it. And I've seen lots of different techniques. Um, the one I like the best is with a quite a powerful um, spring that then you push and lock because that's quick and it's easy. And I really like the look of that. Um, the difficulties, I'm not sure I've got the stuff to make that. Um, the other way, of course, is with a bolt. So I turn a bolt and that goes into a, a tapped nut here, or a welded nut or, a, or something. Um, that's another uh, strong possibility at the moment. Uh, I could take a piece of angle iron and then um, uh, weld a nut onto it. So this is the only way that I can work out how to line this lock. Um, I've purposefully added this tube, as you saw, to kind of direct the bolt through. I've welded a nut on this side, and I've put a, a length of uh, uh, threaded uh, you know, threaded bar through the, the, the two, and trying to hold it in place. So the next thing will be to weld this one hoping for a little movement as possible and so that way when um, I have a handle to put on this and I screw it in it'll lock this into place. That's the thinking. Okay well I've now welded the pieces to hold the back of the instrument box and again, I've got the issue of uh, dealing with some of my horrible welds here. And it just so happened that yesterday through the post came this little kit, which I ordered online uh, a few weeks ago, um, an advert on Instagram. And they are supposed to be extremely tough um, carbide burrs. So I thought this is probably an ideal time to give them a try. So that's what I'm going to do. Let's see if they work. Thank you. 
Well, the answer is they do work. Um, with a bit less operator error, that could have been quite good. So obviously I want to paint the frame. Um, there is a handle arriving today to secure this and uh, I'm praying it's all going to work and I'm going to paint this and then I'm going to wire everything up so for the first time in what seems like an age I see light at the end of the tunnel I just realized there was another thing I forgot actually is that there I need a second um, input for cables here because they're going to be the two cables coming from this one and this one um, uh, linking the, the heating element and I bought this special high temperature wire which I'm going to use for that um, but it's quite thick and I'm going to have to use a thicker gland than I imagine um, so this is a, a 9, a PG9 so I'm going to have to drill another hole in this for that so <laughs> this is to give you an idea how much I hate um, you're doing the electronics part of things which is quite odd because when I was small I used to love electronics um, but I'm really having a sort of tough time getting my head around this but I will get there and I'm not such, I'm not proposing that I'm going to film every part of this because it would be so tedious um, suffice to say that there are diagrams out there and I might film little bits and pieces of it I'm now getting very close to the point where I've got to sort of brace myself and put all this stuff together. The The enclosure at the moment is drying, the paint's still drying, so I can't really do much, which is frustrating because I'd like to, to get going on it. But um, hey-ho, that's the way it goes. So, but that needn't bother you because we cut. I'll quickly show you this in action, really. It's very simple, but I'm pleased because it seems to be very effective. All it is is a piece of threaded M10 rod I bought these off Amazon, they were cheap, they are uh, female threaded uh, handles and as you can see the bolts welded in here and that just closes really tight. So I'm, I'm very pleased with that, that's simple but it works great um, and I'm glad I managed to line everything up and that's that. I drilled a hole in the top of the oven, more or less in the middle, and um, I've given it a little extra, so it's five mil, but then this threaded bit is eight mil, and I'm just going to put some mortar in there because I don't want any escaping heat. So I'm trying to ram that in. And I think that when I push that soundly in, that should be well, should be a pretty good seal. <laughs> Thank you. 
to uh, drill and tap a hole for the uh, earth screw. So I'm going to do that now. Okay, I've put it together. I've no idea if it's gonna work. I'm incredibly nervous. I'm testing this live with you. Um, I'm about to plug it in for the first time. I may have wired the switch wrong. All kinds of things could go wrong. So I'm very, very nervous. I've already warned the family that all the fuses might blow. Um, and actually, I'm going to be armed with the safety devices to tell me if for some reason the whole thing's live. Um, well, let's go. There's no time like the present. There's no point delaying this. Okay, so far, nothing blew up, so the switch is probably wired right. Things are lit. Oh my god, is this actually working? So, I don't know how to use it. <laughs> okay, I, um, let me look at the instruction manual and we'll carry on. It's a good sign that nothing's exploded anyway. I still don't know how to use it, but it is working. I need to work, learn how to use the PID. So that is what I will be doing now, but it's working. In fact, I had to reopen it because I'd, I'd um, wired the thermocouple in the wrong way around, the wrong polarity, so it was going completely doolally. It was showing minus temperatures. Um, anyway, I, I worked that out. I rewired it the right way. And now this fantastic machine is in self-calibrating mode. I set the temperature 200 degrees, and it is basically going through various cycles to calibrate itself to the thermal couple to find the 200 um, degrees. Just for a bit of fun, I'm actually going to put an old file
So I set the PID um, to get the oven to a temperature of 500 degrees Celsius and it's hovering around there um, by two or three degrees and it's been like that for a few minutes and I have bought myself um, one of these thermometers, digital thermometers. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to check the temperature inside the oven and compare it to um, what I'm seeing here. Obviously there'll be a bit of heat loss when I open it, so that's expected. Now oh, that's interesting, it says the temperature in there is 711 degrees. So... That's interesting. <laughs> so what do I make of that? I think that basically I have set potentially um, the PID t t with the wrong thermocouple setting. Um, I'm going to have to look into that. Well, I'm still not out of the woods with this project. Um, it's really uh, giving me a problem. And the main problem is that I'm not getting an accurate reading uh, on the PDI. Um, I leave steel at 815 degrees Celsius for quite a period of time, but it's not even close to, well, it's close-ish to critical temperature, but certainly not at critical temperature. And this is uh, 1070 steel, which should be critical at uh, 815 degrees. Um, this is my second thermocouple that I've put in. And one of the problems was that it may not be appropriate for this PID, although I don't see why not, but also it may have been too long and it was too close to the elements. And then um, Daniel, um, who I will give a credit to um, in the box below, recommended to put the thermocouple through the middle, through the bottom of the oven, which I haven't seen anybody else do yet. And that is so that the sensor, the probe, is as close to the steel that you're trying to heat, so you get as true a reading as possible. This is also a, um, hopefully, a slightly better thermocouple. I'm going to give it a try, but guess who put a steel bottom on the oven? So I'm going to drill through this, try to get the thermocouple in, and let's see how we get on. I really want this to work. come through okay so that is the there but I want some of that to go in as well because otherwise it's all going to be a bit of a mess
there. That's pretty much what I wanted to achieve. So I probably don't want it quite as deep. Anyway, I'll work with that. I'm going to seal that up, seal all that up with mortar, and uh, go through the whole rigmarole of rewiring, and we'll see how that goes. So that's the idea. The thermocouple is now sticking in, uh, sticking out from the bottom and I've placed it so that I can put the blade rack I made over the top. So I don't know how obvious it is to see but there is the, the thermocouple sticking up there. Um, this is, goes on either side of it and hopefully I will have as accurate a temperature as I can of where the blades are actually placed in the oven. So I tried the magnet test at, uh, when the PID, PID said 815 and it didn't work. So what I've done is now turn it up to 850 because we seem to be a lot closer than we were with the previous thermocouple or at least the previous arrangement. So let's see how we're doing here. Nope, still magnetic. Okay. Okay, the oven is now set at 915 degrees, so I might be 100 degrees out. Let's check it out. And there we are. Ah, oh, bliss, 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 bliss. Well, it appears that I blew all the fuses. Well, this has been a long journey, but um, this is a waste blade, by the way. Ah, oh, it was hard. It is hard. I confessed there were times when I really thought this wasn't going to work and it was going to be my first video without a happy ending. And mm, I confessed there were many times during this project where I really thought I wasn't going to be able to finish the video in any sort of satisfactory way. And it's not 100% satisfactory. My PID is 100 degrees out. Um, I'm assuming it's 100 degrees out because I have to believe that um, 1070 steel gets to critical at 815 centigrade. That's what everybody says. Anyway, the point is now I kind of know where, where I am. It means that I can work with that. And if you have stayed with me all the way through, I am so grateful. Uh, I'm super tired of doing this. I'm glad it's over and I'm looking forward to using it and maybe beginning to trust it a little bit. Anyway, yet again, please, if you enjoyed it, subscribe. It means a hell of a lot to me. Like, comment, anything, but I'd love you to engage. Anyway, thank you so much for bearing with me. I hope it was useful. I hope it taught you some things if you want to do it better than I did and um, maybe even send me some examples of what you did. Anyway, thank you so much, and I'll see you the next one.